So you bought your first Klingon, or you've been using Klingons for a while, but just not sure how to clean them properly. I'm gonna walk through the steps on how to do that today here on Wise Owl Paint Party. Today, you're not gonna see me. You're gonna see my sink of brush cleaning goodness because I did mention that I would go through how I clean a brush. So as you can see, this is my Klingon S50 brush, my favorite of all of the Klingon brushes, all the brushes period. And it's pretty caked on with my new refurbished gentleman Wise All color. And instead of having to rewash it and you know, in between sessions of using it, I've been putting it in this plastic bag for a good, uh, I'd say it's been in there for about three weeks now. And as you can see, you know, I was smart about how I used the brush. I kept the paint from about the halfway point up. I didn't get it all over this area where it will dry a little bit because there's nothing to keep it moist up in the, um, the metal area, right? So, it's gonna be fairly easy to clean, but that's what I wanted to go through is kind of show everybody how I clean the brush. So the very first thing, obviously you take it out of the bag and you're going to rinse. I'm not sure how this is gonna sound, so I might cut over to um, music or something while this is rinsing out. But the premise of the first step is just simply running under hot water. You don't need soap with Klingon brushes and Wise Owl paints because it cleans really, really well. I mean, this brush will end up looking like it was brand new when I'm done cleaning it. So I'm just gonna stick it under the hot water and I'm gonna kind of go through and show you like what happens when that happens. And then I'll come back um, and go back to talking because it'll probably be annoying to listen to the water running all through it. All right, so there you can see, just simply from rinsing it with hot water, the brush is almost completely clean already. You can see that. Now, if you look really close, there are some of the filaments that have a little bit of blue still looking like it's attached to it, not like it's dyed. So the, the tips will get like dyed a color, depending on what color you use. That is gonna be permanent and not something you're gonna change and not anything that's gonna like, if I use like a pink, it's not gonna mix together. It's just dyed and is permanently ad adhered to the filaments. So don't stress over that at all whatsoever. It's not ever gonna come back to that light gray color that it was when you first bought it. But if down in the black parts, if you're still seeing a little bit of the paint looking like it's adhered to the filaments, that's where you want to clean it. And the best thing you can use for, for that is just like a dish soap or, or um, there's scrubby soap things that they have now. Um, but for me, and unless I really feel like I need to, I don't even do that. I'll just continue rinsing it off with hot water. And then my little trick that I have is I get one of these little plastic, um, plastic bristle, bristle, whatever you want to call them, brushes. And I just kind of brush it like this under the hot water and that just kind of breaks loose any of the parts that did decide to stick because and the main reason why they did stick to any of the filaments at all is just because I left it in the bag for three weeks it wouldn't even normally do that but it's just as simple as just kind of taking a brush to it like this and just breaking them loose a little bit under the hot water and then continuing to rinse so I'm going to go to that step really quick and again I'm going to cut to probably music so you don't have to listen to my faucet running.
All right, and there you have it. Nice and clean. I didn't even use soap. Um, again, you can use like a dish soap because ultimately these, these are not uh, hog hair or natural bristles. These are DuPont fibers, so they're filaments, so they're able to be cleaned you know, like you would clean something that's plastic ultimately. So you can use a dish soap to really wash it out really good. Get the soap in there, you know, kind of mush them together, rub them, rub it through. Make sure to rinse it out really, really, really good though. If you're going to use soap, because you don't want to ultimately, you know, leave some kind of soap residue and then dip that into your paint. So you want to make sure you rinse it out really good if you decide to use soap. I don't normally use soap. I don't really see a reason to unless it got really, really, really dirty. And I'm pretty um, cognizant of that when I'm painting to ensure I don't, you know, get the paint all over it too bad to need to worry about that or leave it in the plastic bag for too long where it starts to get, you know, the, the crusties up here and around this area where I know I'll end up needing soap if I do. So, but that's what I do. So a couple of points when I was, Rinsing it, you want to stick the uh, brush up into your faucet, down into, there's going to be a reservoir down here. I can, can't really pull it out, but deep down inside of this brush, there's a little reservoir that's kind of like a pocket where the paint will sit. And you want to make sure you get your faucet down into that area and allow it to push it all out. And that's kind of what you saw in the beginning part of the video. The water was going down and it was pushing it out the sides. So that's a, that's a one of the other little points I wanted to make and let you guys know. And then again, just plastic brush, just kind of brush it off gently. You don't need to do it hard or you don't need to get a metal brush and scrub them because then you could start, you know, tearing up the filaments. And then the last step that is what I normally do, and you could see one sitting here, is after I've done all of those things, I'll stick it in my, what I call my Klingon cup and... I just stick it in there and then what will happen is if I missed anything, the magic of these brushes with Wiseau paint is that it will just kind of, gravity will do its job and it will pull whatever paint off and it'll be gone. And if I did a really good job cleaning before I even got that far, the water will stay clear, kind of how this one is here. And then it just is sitting in water for the next time I want to use. And that's one of the things if you've heard about Klingon brushes that you can leave them suspended in water and you absolutely can because again they're not um, hog hair or horse hair bristles they're natural um, DuPont filaments so they're plastic they're not you know something where you need to worry about them sitting in the water for too long um, my advice would be to not only fill it up to just below the, the metal area Although I've had these sitting in water for an extended period of time by accident. And I can tell you, uh, they're probably the only brush that I found that have never rusted. Uh, I was very impressed by that. They have some really great stainless steel that they use because I didn't mean to. I think I put too many brushes in the water and then the water came up a little bit higher and they, they never, they never rusted. And I can tell you every other brush I've ever done that with has rusted. Um, no matter whether they say it's stainless steel or not. So that was kind of another uh, good thing about Klingon brushes too. So easy to clean. Um, and they'll last as long as you take good care of them. So, so yeah, just take it out of your plastic bag, rinse all the water out, make sure you get down into the reservoir down there in the bottom, brush off any excess that you might have, and then stick it in your Klingon cup. So I'm just going to stick it in here with its little friend. It's going to sit right there until next time I want to use it. Now, if I come back to it and the water's not clear, then I need to continue to rinse it and then put it back before I use it again. So right now, these two I just washed. I don't see any discoloration from the first brush. There's likely not going to be from the second one that I just did with you guys. And if there's no discoloration in the water, then I'm good to use it for whatever next project with just, you know, kind of rinsing it out and then moving on. But if it did have some discoloration, I'd want to dump out that water, re-rinse the brushes again really quick, and then put them back in the water if I so choose to have them sitting in water. But I used to have a little rack here before I had to move and pack everything up where I would just hang them. And that's probably the most ideal situation is 
you know, wash them, clean them, do the Klingon cup for a day or two, re-rinse it one last time, and then hang them up. And that, that would be ideally what I would do for most brushes. Now I do have one or two that's usually lingering around in my Klingon cup. And then I just have them to grab. So like, let's say I want to use this now, I'm gonna pull this out of the cup and I don't wanna use it like this, drippy, drippy wet. So I'm just gonna squeeze the water out of it. And as I squeeze the water out, if I start seeing paint creeping out of anywhere, and this is the one I just washed and I didn't see any, it looked pretty clear to me. If I squeeze all the water out and there's paint, then I know I need to re-rinse it before I use it. If I squeeze it and there's nothing, that means it's good to go and ready to be used. And then the, the brush is good and damp already to start with, which is, is you know a good way to start with your brush, but you don't want it too damp. So you probably want to do one of these numbers, wring out some water, and then rub it across a shop towel real quick to, to take some of the drippy wetness away. Damp is okay, dripping wet is not, because then you start um, watering down your paint as you're painting it on, and that's never any fun. So, but there you have it. That's how I clean pretty much all of my brushes. Uh, I definitely am a, a Klingon guy. These have been my favorite since I figured out this one right here. I got this S50 when they first came out and got stuck on them, and then I've learned what each different one does and how well it works for me. So the S50 is pretty much my go-to for painting. So that's the one I use to kind of show you, put it back in its little Klingon cup with the buddy. And that'll be it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the links down below. Hopefully this was helpful. I know a lot of folks have asked me, okay, so you put it in the plastic bag, but then when you're all done, what do you do? Well, there you have it. That's what I do. Pretty easy stuff. Again, with the Wiseall paint and the Klingon brushes, that the brushes clean really, really well. And there you have it. Just that easy to clean and maintain your Klingon brushes. And if you haven't tried a Klingon brush, I highly recommend it. And you can find them at your local Wiseall retailer today. If you're not sure if you have one near you, I'll have them in the links below on how to find one. And also, if you enjoyed this content, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see next time I add new content. And as always, happy painting.